Greetings everyone, my name is Napoleon Complex and I go by Ludendorff and Slytherin Forums. Today we are wrapping up, or I believe we are wrapping up my Glacier Spotlight, with a look at the Indians <coughs> and their masked archers and what they may be able to do against my Galatian army. Now, as going as I, I've said before in previous videos, the Galatians are characterized by the superior warbands, which are capable of defeating just about anything from the front, as long as they aren't generaled up elephants, lancers, or po possibly some of the more elite units like the Pike Phalanx or the veteran legionaries. They are excellent breakthrough troops that can smash apart just about any average force. Uh, even a pike phalanx can be in danger of being disrupted by them. And even uh, unless you have superior soldiers who are able to survive the impact, like for instance the veteran African spearmen of the Hannibal and Africa list, there is almost no infantry force that can survive against them either short term due to the impact or long term due to their large unit size. So these units are in many ways the ultimate breakthrough force uh, that you can field in large numbers with the possible exception of the Roman legions uh, and maybe under certain circumstances the pike phalanx although I, of, I often find that I like these guys more than the pike phalanxes though that may just be personal preference I might just favor the impact foot over the it's kind of the pike phalanx is almost like a Offensive spear plus so I may just favor impact foot over offensive spear in general So don't dismiss the pikes in that respect just because of what I'm saying both are good options Options and in in with a small number of units involved So only a couple of superior warbands against a couple of phalanxes I'd probably put my money in the phalanxes if there's a large number of warbands and there's more chance for the impact bonus to have its effect early on and create flanking opportunities and disruptions from routers, I'd probably put my money on the superior warbands. So we've got these superior warbands available to us. We also have access to these close order warbands and these are just there essentially to fill out the rather small Galatian line. They are still expensive troops. Now these are not bad soldiers, they can crush just about any average unit. Uh, that isn't offensive spear and even offensive spear will start to lose against them over time. They'll smash Sutari, they'll smash, they'll slowly grind down any average quality impact unit which isn't a warband itself or which doesn't have an armor advantage. So they may actually be able to hold their own quite well against say imitation legionaries. Even a unit as tough and expensive as that may lose to a warband and uh, they can't, they the only the where they struggle with the units that you have to keep these away from are again elephants and lancers. You really have to keep them away from lancers and elephants because they are quite vulnerable to those. Um, the elephants not so much as it, as it turns out in my testing, but the lancers particularly. But you also need to keep them away from enemy superior troops because the superior troops will be able to beat them in melee, and this means that they can take advantage of the cohesion penalty that the warbands suffer from. And you really need to keep them away from uh, superior units who can get that advantage. And because once things, this is something to bear in mind for both the warband and the superior warband. Once things do start going wrong for them, they disrupt, fragment, and then break very quickly. And I've seen even these superior warbands go to pieces at an alarmingly fast pace if they're in the wrong matchup. So it's a very brittle shock army that is to be used to break through quickly and then gain an advantage once they're through. They will not be able to outnumber the enemy, they do not have the troops for that, and so you can't go in for the my usual flanking attacks, and so and you cannot uh, just sit back on the defensive because they don't have the skirmishers to cover to cover themselves with skirmishers. And these troops are well you can't that's the main reason the skirmishers will just shoot them to bits you can use a warband on the defense in fact their impact foot status makes them quite good at repelling enemy attacks but seeing as you the enemy will use that time to get around your flanks if they're and they will usually be the larger army that's not how to use the galatians this is an attacking army and any attempt to use them defensively outside of emergencies like if you're fighting a lancer army will probably end in, in tears 
I'm just clicking around at the moment to have a think about how to assemble my army. I'll be back with a more serious analysis. Uh, um, I'll be back with my main offering later on. Looking at the Galatian cavalry, now if the infantry can't get the job done, the Galatians do have a second option. These, and they're, this is why I said in another game, they're not a one-trick pony. They are very heavy oriented, but they have heavy these heavy armored noble cavalry. And they have a large force of ordinary noble cavalry as well. So with a full force of cavalry, they can have up to seven units of cavalry on the field, which is a strong cavalry force. And with the noble cavalry available, it's a very cost-effective cavalry force. Uh, this can help to keep enemy lancers at bay if the enemy are deploying them. And these are what you use to prevent your army from being encircled. Well, the infantry get on and do the job. I often consider this army to be more Roman than a Roman army. It is the old uh, manipular doctrine of getting the infantry to break through the enemy infantry before the Roman cavalry can be overcome in the flanks. And the Galatians, despite being of uh, Gallic or origin, being arch enemies to the Romans, um, historically, they are probably more of a roman style army than the romans themselves they have to rely on that breakthrough even more than the roman army does because the romans at least have cheap units cheap units like the triari to keep the flanks busy while the galatian army really doesn't offer that those kinds of cheap units it's a small army very prone to being encircled and you have to use it aggressively so Let's have a look at the Indian. So obviously we've got taking our army against the Indians. Let's have a look at that army. Now the main, there are two main concerns that I have for my Galatians when I take my army out to get against these uh, these Indians. They have up to seven units of war elephants. Now I don't have any good options against elephants. They'll chase off my cavalry. Though at least the cavalry can evade that confrontation. And the superior warbands may be able to hold their own, actually. So I think the elephants might go down to a superior warband if I can if I can survive the impact. But the elephant impact charge is very dangerous to the warbands, especially if the Indian archers can weaken the warbands sufficiently and make them more vulnerable to to a sudden break. Because, as I said, with that cohesion penalty, these are more like average troops than superior troops once things start going wrong. And so these elephants will be difficult to get past. As if that wasn't bad enough, we also have these Indian heavy chariots, and these may be used. You can throw them out in front of the line with a space with uh, two spaces between them, and the archer line behind. And the these impact units do not do well charging chariots either. And again, due to that lousy cohesion test uh, penalty, the superior warbands may fragment on impact and that will allow the chariots to plunge through the line and they'll be behind the Galatian warbands and the archers if the archers can hold out long enough and then the chariots can circle back around and come in for the kill so that forces us into a risky engagement if we want our warbands to come past against that particular threat I can use my noble cavalry to charge in and engage the chariots and I'll probably keep a couple of noble cavalry in the center or maybe floating around the horns on the flanks in order to uh, lock down any chariots and allow the rest of the army access. And this is the kind of thing you have to think about. It's almost a bit like being an engineer. You have to think about how you're going to facilitate your armies for progress across areas of rough terrain and past enemy units that the warbands can't handle. And you need to use all of these other units to do it. You also have some light gentlemen in your toolbox as well, and they can be good for tying up enemy skirmishers and also just providing a little bit of harassment on the flanks to make life more difficult for those pesky flankers. Flankers such as the Indian Cavalry. Now, the Indian Cavalry isn't very good, but there's a lot of it, and combined with either the heavy chariots or the elephants, this could actually be very dangerous to our noble cavalry force. Just a couple of armored, just a couple of elephants 
combined with the Indian cavalry. So if he goes for a cat next cavalry elephant formation, then he can just push this cavalry force aside. I will have to evade with it because I can't confront the elephants. Or what I might have to do, and that what I might do, is divert a few superior warbands to help with the elephant fight. Because I don't expect anything in his main front line to be particularly dangerous besides the elephants. I may want to thin this out using the superior warbands to distract the elephants, and it's the war cheaper warbands that can actually move forward and engage the archer line. Although with them getting shot to pieces, I do need to watch out for cohesion tests from the missile fire. Again, that's the strength of the warbands because of their large unit size, they need to take a lot of concentrated fire. But on the other hand, due to the expense of these units, once they do disrupt, you're losing a lot more from them. Any hole in the Galatian line is a stinging defeat for them. And they really do rely on a, this very rigid and almost vulnerable formation. It's it's brittle once it's broken it will once there's a hole in it it's very hard for the line to come back together but while it remains firm it's extremely dangerous we've got some indian close so moving on to the infantry and this is where the indian weaknesses start to show these close fighters will not be able to do a thing against even a warband unless they're on rough terrain so they could do very well being positioned on the rough ground because the Indian massed archers, which provide the bulk of their infantry, cannot do, uh, ca won't be able to stop a warband even on the rough ground. These close order fighters who have melee capabilities will be able to stop the warbands that I'll have to avoid this area of the battlefield, and that meet that will restrict my deployment to some degree. Although I made to deploy some units out here. Because if I can move, if he does place massed archers here, that's not going to stop a superior warband. I'll just move forward and engage on the rough ground anyway. I'm not afraid of the rough ground if there's only massed archers on it. Though maybe I should be, because of course if anything can come in from the flanks while my troops are moderately disordered, then the warbands are in trouble again. Finally, moving on to the, well, there's some forest tribesmen, but I think we've more or less discussed all of the significant uh, Indian forces. I think it's time for me to be back once I've built my army. So as I was saying, I'm very much taking the combat engineer's approach to this. I am prepared to confront his troops on this rough ground, and I've brought the tools I feel I need to do so. If he places something like close Indian fighters here, well, that's what the jet light javelmen are for. I'm planning to send them around the flanks to engage in melee. They'll be forced to turn, and then we can engage on more to even terms. Um, if he and I'm actually planning to use these harassment troops, I consider bringing chariots. But given the constrained nature of the fighting here, I don't think that'll be useful. An alternative would be to get the cavalry right around the flank here and then attack him from the flanks, but I suspect he might have elephants or something here that will make that difficult, but again, that's something I can use the light javelin for. And I think I will actually take all of my light javelin and place them over here to help this operation. <clears throat> so the plan here is to actually turn this area from an area of weakness into an area of strength. Use my stronger units here to be able to actually effect a breakthrough, and then we've got control of this entire part of the battlefield. Now that could go wrong. I'm doing this as much to demonstrate a bit of flexibility, and this is, I'm going to see if I can manage to make an infantry assault on bad ground, because it can be done. I'd like to see if I can set that up if at all possible. In the center, we have this checkerboard formation. Now, if you, now you, one, I kind of moved them, and I shouldn't have there. I've kept these armored noble cavalry near the edges of the formation. If any chariot units emerge to block our advance, then I can use these to engage and allow the rest of the army through. Again, so it's kind of like um, building a bridge for your army to cross. And over here I have the rest of the noble cavalry, and these are really flank guards. If the, there are any dangerous units lurking around here, their job is just to keep them occupied. Looking at this, my army's uh, right flank does look a little bit thin. I'm hoping that the broad, um, that my broad spread across the battlefield will make that at least a little bit difficult for them. I will have to use these cavalry 
to block a flank attack, even if that means sending them into a bad situation. But it's all to facilitate this inf infantry charge. And that's what the goal today is. So I'll, uh, I'll see you next turn then, when the battle starts. Farewell. So, what do we have in store for us today? He's just selecting his army just now. Drum roll. All right, more or less as I was expecting. So we've got archers approaching the rough ground here. Now he's got these Indian forest tribesmen in support. And there's one elephant, well-placed elephant there that he's going to use in the flanks to mess up my cavalry. Hmm. But he's weak on this flank. This is not a strong flank. Though the Nomad Light Horse Archers may cause a problem for my cavalry. Interesting that he's moving them off this way. Mm -hmm. So remember the plan was to achieve a bridgehead here. But with his elephants concentrated in this manner, I might have a job. I've played against Gribal in uh, Pike and Shot. Uh, where he, I believe, he, or was it Gribble I fought there? I think it might have been. I'm not actually sure if we met before. Let's take a close look at this. So I have three units of gentlemen, two units of noble cavalry, which are excellently matched by his own Indian cavalry, and uh, three units of warbands and a unit of war, superior warband, which is in support. He has, he's got plenty of archers here, I've noted, so they'll probably spread out to cover these part, patches of rough. Though interestingly enough, he doesn't have enough rough ground to use all of the rough, to position all these troops in difficult terrain. If I can reach this forest first, I can possibly catch him out here. But then what am I going to do about his other force? I'll have to swing units across. And I definitely don't want my armor and noble cavalry to get stuck against some uh, Indian close fights while the archers pick away at the armored cavalry. On the other hand, that's probably a better fate than ending up having to fight the uh, Indian elephants. Right. Also, these archers will probably take a while to take effect on my troops, so if he isolates his force on this ground, what I could just do is at this point is abandon the attempt to take this rough ground and just move away from the sector of the battlefield. And I think that's what I'm going to do. This attack is foolhardy. And we are the Galatians. We're not fools. This is a tough army that's coming off the legacy of having conquered um, Anatolia. We're no undisciplined barbarian horde. At least that's not how I play the Galatians. Next turn. A similar situation to my Avar's game, I'm going to get dogged by his archers if I'm not careful. But that I want to force them into a position where they're forced to come away from this rough ground. 
Add that, or at least let me focus on this side of his army. So let's take a look. He is now threatening to fire arrows at these units here. And I don't actually want to let him fire his arrows. I want to, when he finally gets into position to shoot, I want to have turned around and be ready to come at him. So I need to take a very conservative approach. I need to try and stay away from his army right now as much as possible. And that's honestly more important than, than maintaining formation. So let's just try and keep as much distance between our troops and his troops as possible for the moment. This section of my army is most vulnerable because they're not maneuverable enough to... If he turns, they're not maneuverable enough to stay away just now. But in that situation, uh, hopefully by that time I'll be far enough away that he'll only be able to get off one or two volleys against the lead units. Bring my skirmishers up because they can be used to help with uh, basically they can help units reface and turn in more constructive directions. Right, next turn. Oh wait, and we've got our cavalry force as well. Don't want to forget about them because I think they're going to be important to this battle. Now it's next turn. Hmm. I think he's just lost his archers, his horse archers. Well, for the moment, though, I can push them off the field. Mm. That artillery can cause lots of casualties firing into the sides of my troops. Concentrating his elephants over here. Okay. Well, the thing is, I need something to attack him. He's just going to run his entire army away here. Let's re-examine the situation, see if I can maybe turn around and attack here. But even the most optimistic plan isn't it's just not a good idea to attack this kind of position. So that's a small victory at least.
Okay, let's keep the schedule. Run away. And what I'm hoping to do is set up a better battle line over on this side of the map. I'm hoping to swing around. The problem is, is that he, I need to lure him out far enough that I can actually get a decent attack going. Okay, this could slow everything down. I'd like to say I'm not just thoughtlessly running away, but I don't really have a strategy just now. That warband will be vulnerable to fire next turn. We're going to take at least one bad volley from those Indian archers. Probably two. Okay, keep going. Right. And let's talk about this. So he's massively reinforced his right, and that's just making an assault in this impractical. So I'm turning to my other strategy, which was to overwhelm his left. But he's moved this away, and because he has ranged units and I don't, I am forced into this demoralizing retreat where he can just keep pecking away at my line but I have to be patient because if I turn and I try and charge this I'm dead uh, I don't I don't think I can break his troops in this ground not with all those elephants hanging around let's just try and reform on this hill and have another look at the situation because he's got the better of me here next turn so Gribal proposes a draw. It's tempting, and they've already returned. I think what this is teaching me again is that the Galatians have to be prepared to go into where the enemy is most concentrated and most fortified. Maybe if I'd been better prepared for this assault, things wouldn't have stalled out like this. As the Galatians, you have dominance in the open, so your opponent is going to take the rough. They're going to behave like a Persian army or another army that needs the rough ground in order to support it. If you then do as I'm doing here and shy away from the assault, then well, what's Gribble supposed to do? This army can't survive out in the open. Of course he's going to move this flank away. And I'm equally not now in a position to easily launch an attack on this rough ground. I think what we'll have to do in the meantime is basically organize... I'm still going to try... I am going to try to assault this. I'm not going to just give up and accept the draw because that's not the point of the video. We're trying to see what the Galatians can actually do and what they can't do. So there's no point in me just throwing in the towel. <coughs> I am going to have to form up and I am going to have to attack that terrifying Indian position. And I think 
to be perfectly honest, that there are ways in which I can do it. Let's take a closer look at the Indian position. There are three units of Indian archers and close fighters defending a triangular position here. Three superior warbands could lock this down quite nicely and last for a while. <coughs> we might even push the Indian archers out of their defensive positions. <coughs> now, he's supported by light artillery as well, and that's dangerous because it could disrupt on our units. So we probably need a reserve unit. So I'm going to have to requisition four units of superior warbands to make the assault on that position. They all have to be supported. Let's see, we've got Indian elephants. Do we have a fifth warband available? Yes, I do have five superior warbands. It's because I need something to confront the elephants. And I'll need my cavalry to help against his cavalry. I'm out of superior warbands, so I'm going to need cavalry to help me distract the enemy elephants. There's a good chance we'll end up chasing the light cavalry off the field if I do that. I suppose I might not have much of a choice, to be honest. Put them there, that way if they charge, they're risking getting caught by my cavalry. We'll have to finish the skirmish first. Right. Once I finish driving off his cavalry, let's see, was one unit, to, two units to flank here, and ideally two units to distract the cavalry. But he's got all of these elephants and other units floating around here. But no, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to assault the strongest position in the Indian line and see if I can win that way. These will help get them ready to act as a, as a screen to my advancing troops. And maybe even get attack, an attack and disruption on the Indian close fighters, which will even things up for my warbands when they assault the hill. Because moderately disordered is not impossible to overcome. You can win even if you're moderately disordered, if the enemy are weak enough. But I do need to protect my troops from his elephants as I move forward. Next turn. Okay, so we've discussed it, and Gribble knows that I'm gearing up for an assault. So, of course, I'm paying for my early hesitance. It's not the masked archers on the rough ground I'm scared of, it's the elephants. So if you're a newer player who's watching this and you see a position like this and you're scared, well guess what? I'm scared too, but if this game isn't is going to end in anything other than a draw, I have to force battle here. It would be more effective if we could charge from here. Okay. Blast. He's hugging the side there, making it impossible for me to drive off his horse archers. Fine. Harass me all you want, you only have so many arrows, and if you charge, I'll just fragment you. 
Right, it's too early in the morning right now. I'm too tired. I'm going to come back when I've had a rest. I'll uh, see you guys in a few hours. Okay. I wish I had some dramatic music to play just now. My plan is to attack this section here with a pinning force of warbands and some warbands in reserve who are really planning to infiltrate round this flank. We're going to try to win the battle against the skirmishers and try to keep the elephants and Indian cavalry busy with the noble cavalry. And I am going to draw some more cavalry towards the flank here to help. My armoured noble cavalry are eventually going to threaten to attack some of the more vulnerable. Basically, just try and keep things busy on this flank, this side of the battlefield. Try and stay out of archer distance just now. The bulk of the fighting, however, is going to be done by my superior warbands, who are going to try to capture the space here and take on the elephants. Now, I will have to fight these elephants at one point, no matter what way I attack. The logical reaction for Gribble, for me threatening his Indian archers in the rough, is to bring his, in his elephants and tr challenge my troops. So the only thing I can try and do in response to that is bring in my most powerful units, which are the superior warbands, who can fight elephants if they can stand their grounds and if they are properly led by generals. They'll be backed up by the ordinary warbands as well, but to not nearly the same. But the ordinary warbands will be operating more around this area here. They'll be trying to keep the flanks engaged alongside the cavalry. The superior warbands are the ones who are really going to be taking the fight to the Indian war elephants. Once we can capture this ground here, and hopefully our other units can distract the enemy Indian archers and maybe even get some flanks on them, if we can get our light gentlemen through this light infantry screen, then we can start to surround these pockets of Indian archers and reduce them. So this is going to be an assault. Next turn. <clears throat> hmm. There are now two elephants facing that flank, or one that could go either way. He's also moving the light troops out of the way. Go after them. <coughs> They're out of range. But uh, keep some javelin men around to help against the elephants. So, yeah, we'll need to circle around to that area. Do I have to divert a superior war band from here? Uh, 
I'm, once I move to that square here, will be in range of the enemy missiles. So let's not hurry that. <clears throat> so it's not a situation we want to run into. Uh, so yeah, really focusing the bulk of the army and smashing through that gap. Cavalry can't attack because we'll be a setting duck for all kinds of horrible things. What I can do is hover just out of range of the archers. I'm very aware that we will start taking charges and fire from those horse archers but there's a limit to what I can do about that <coughs> turn like this so I can maybe chase them off again if we've got time uh, we definitely want to come in we kind of want to carve in in this direction while they're occupied with the warbands next turn So we're just out of range for now. Both sides are prepared, making their final preparations. Hmm. He keeps reinforcing this area. Of course, that means he's also devoting more and more resources to it. I don't know if these Indian archers can defeat... Uh, war bands without support on rough ground. <sighs> Be more annoying. Actually, that's dangerous now. So of course the light horse are going to be a continuous thorn in my side and now they've disrupted one of my noble cavalry units. I'll move them ahead and try and protect them with the armoured noble cavalry. We'll have to turn around to protect the unit. Maybe turn in this direction so they can... Well, that would, that would, yeah, that would at least block one of the units and they can start to move sideways off. Or uh, maybe I should just move off. That unit's low in ammo, so we can hold out for a little bit longer, we can run them short in ammunition. That will reduce the disruption chance from concentrated fire. <coughs> hmm. Okay, this could be an early site of engagement. Our cavalry and support. <coughs> Problem is, all of this maneuvering is uh, delaying my advance. It's increasing the risk of a draw. And I explicitly don't want to draw. Normally I can maneuver past it, but the unmaneuverable status of my warbands is actually starting to get in the way. And I can't ignore the threat from those elephants. I need to move troops over. This draws more resources away from my efforts here. Because he's starting to move elephants around here. Um, 
So this warband, oh, it's constant, forcing me to constantly shuffle troops into this part of the battlefield. Okay, keep some troops in reserve here. Next turn. Yeah, he's not going to try and take that battle. He probably wants the support of his chariots. Now this was threatening my flank. It's interesting he's pulled it all back. Yeah, but he can't get both units in. And around. And that should be him out of ammo now, hopefully. Which means there's a limit to what these units can do to us. Right. Hopefully they'll rally up, because they do need their help. This hopefully represents the last turn we have to spend waiting to get into the action. Do I care if they flip some arrows our way? I don't really care enough. about on this flank well that's simple enough they're going to press on and so these units are going to start to match up against these units here these units will come in and attack here and uh, actually I have some spare capacity on this flank don't I so these units can start to swing in here if the cavalry can distract the elephants And if he's not careful, my skirmishers could play a role in this. Since he's given up control of the forest so easily, I'll just get some troops back inside the woods. Oh, right, his cavalry. Okay, so, and that's what the war bands are for, to confront the elephants. Well, it should be the other way around, because both of these... Uh, this matchup's favourable to my noble cavalry, but it's a bit doubtful with the war bands. I think I need to be aggressive and take on the elephants with the war bands. It's not optimal, but it will have to do. That's not really my... Well, to see what how the situation develops, I'm actually leaning towards... Um, I'm probably going to be forced to engage the cavalry to cavalry and elephant to, to warband. Uh, the worry is, of course, if he breaks through, he could shatter my line before I can break through in the rough ground here. Nobody said it would be easy. Next turn. Oh, come on, that forced me to clamber across the rough ground as well. I 
could try to reduce this island of rough ground first. Good. Not so good. Okay, he's decided that this is where when he wants to face me. I think we're just within charge range. Which is unfortunate. Right, get into melee. I have to think a bit more carefully about it here. Because that elephant's coming up to attack this noble cavalry unit. I'm probably better off castling my uh, warbands behind my cavalry behind my warbands. Uh, it'll take fire from the uh, rough ground, that's the only thing. Oh, we still have to do it. And if anything gets shot at, I'd rather it was my uh, skirmishers rather than... Oh, get the cavalry safe behind our units then. And... Uh, And the warbands, unfortunately, are going to have to take a little bit of fire for us. See, that could be a trap for his cavalry if he pursues to this square here. I might be able to shove him into a corner. Of the map. Hmm. Although, no, that doesn't seem very likely to be able to escape through there. Because uh, we control this area, but we don't control this gap. Um. I need time to get set up. My troops need time to turn around again. You know, it's probably better if my warbands focus on this battle if he's going to open it. Because we could swing away and that would force him to consider coming off the rough ground. Uh, so what I'll have to do is just keep sliding around until I've got my troops round to this side. So we're going to open up a battle on this side first of all I think. And I'm actually going to f to concentrate my warbands over there. Slight change in plans but I think it can work. Let's see so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so I don't want to commit everything to this fight. I am outnumbered after all. And I think we'll actually move to start threatening this island here and render all of this irrelevant for the moment. So you'll have to choose whether to accept the loss of these Indian archers or whether to come out and fight me with his elephants. And that's what I want him to do. I want him to expose his elephants first. Send one unit of cavalry over here to help with this situation and... Just keep these, get these cavalry into position where they will be able to help with the upcoming battle. But let the warbands absorb the arrows. I think this unit is technically in range. All right. Next turn. I'm continuing to feel my way forward in the dark. 
He's out of ammo with these units, so their wor their worst sting is over. But of course, now I've got to deal with charges within artillery range. It shouldn't be so bad on its own. He's pulling back here. Not sure that's a great idea. He had me under quite a bit of pressure. Hmm. Okay, the elephants are moving up. They'll uh, intervene as I once I move up. So I'm going to have to confront the elephants now. Honestly, I can use my well. Let's see. That chariot can't move to here yet. So I don't think I think I'm in a position to block him from uh, attacking. Oh, I should probably not have moved there. So now the elephants can drive everything off. Uh, well, I've got some cavalry in reserve to move up, because if they push all of this away, but something to move up to counter-attack the chariots. Um, <coughs> it's time to move up for the assault on the, on the Indian archers. And that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be an assault. Um, we're going to be attacking on difficult ground, but once we start to make some progress against... It's almost like we're attacking light fortifications and pike and shot. But once we've managed to overcome this area, it should be easier to break through into the open. Let's see. Well, we're still getting the upper hand here. Let's continue. Uh, I think we've got less troops because we took casualties early on. Let's take a look at the situation here. See, he's obviously afraid of this. Thing is, if I move up too aggressively, um, he can shoot at my light javelinman with his Indian archers. I think I will engage here as it turns out. Let's see how this goes. This is kind of playing into my hands a little bit because I'm able to move my warbands towards his light units. Well, that's probably thinking about where the elephants are going to be. Tricky work. I can maybe um, try and steer clear of the archers, but if we take a few volleys, it shouldn't be too damaging. I've got these guys in reserve. A little too close to the sun there. Fly this way. All right, this is starting to get a little bit more for uh, more straightforward. Now that it's clear where my path lies, I'll give them the general, would you? They're the ones who are going to be doing the assaulting. Though then again, I might want to save it for the elephant charges. And I just realized what's happening here. Carsus. Um, oh dear. Not thinking about my zones of control, am I? Never mind, well, we definitely want a general on his superior warband now. And that also means I can't charge the rough ground next turn. And it's going to disrupt my cavalry. Turn to face here. Uh, lend them the general. With a bit of luck, these chariots will get, get themselves in. No, wait. Think about it. That chariot charges through to here. Do I really want them on this square here? 
blocking my superior warbands and then the cavalry take the full force of the elephants and then the cavalry are blocked by the elephants and disrupted probably not a good move I think we're best off just absorbing the elephant charge here and then we can hopefully maneuver against the chariots but now I've changed the face uh, it's all very difficult next turn okay so now we're losing both of these fights and he had an archer unit which I didn't know about and these are the kinds of things that can go wrong right now I've learned in another match that my superior warbands do actually have an advantage against elephants in a prolonged melee fight I'm expecting a charge from these Indian elephants Right. Oh, that was unlucky. A single volley disrupted them. Usually they can stand at least two. They can they can it takes at least two. Probably because they've been shot up before. So the percentage of casualties needed to cause a disruption was lower. So that was a bad disruption to suffer. Um, especially, even more unfortunate because it had a general attached. However, he chose not to engage here, so I do have a bit of a, a bit of a parole. I will. Yeah, I need to think carefully about how to do, arrange my generals here, because with two elephants coming, I want my generals to be on the units they need to be on. We're going to win this. Uh, the question is how my other units do. I think I'll place my general on this unit instead. And they will move forward to engage with the elephants. Charge here and we will win that battle against the Indian archers with time. Those chariots are frightening opponents, especially with the elephants in support. But I don't really want to take a charge from chariots with my superior warbands either, so we're in quite a difficult position here. Seeing as I'm winning this area here, and I think I have the overall advantage here, what I think I will do is I will move my elephants, my superior warbands up to here to lock down. Uh, but then you see, then there's potential for my... Um, Warbands, but honestly, if I could fight, if I, if my superior warbands can hold that their ground here, and uh, I think I will actually give them the general to reflect that. If they can hold their ground, they can potentially tie down two elephant units. Uh, if they're and get if these elephants both decide to engage this unit, and if he decides to engage here and uh, let this elephant charge forward then I can move up this unit here to attack the elephants as they come through see so, yeah, I think I'll place my unit here move this unit up to here I uh, hmm. So I'm thinking to take my Noble Cavalry and place them here to cover the disrupted unit as it moves around the flanks because we are... Hmm. I mean the presence of the elephant is difficult, it makes life difficult for us whatever we do against those um, chariots. My best options right now are to try and get around the flanks of the enemy cavalry and if the elephant charges through and it throws my cavalry into chaos a little bit that doesn't matter but we want to avoid losing the cavalry or and above all we want to avoid letting these heavy chariots through to attack our um, close order warbands who will be quite vulnerable to them so he engages here and then what does the elephant do from this position well it can move here in which case it's zone of controlled um, if I turn this way or it can try and knock my noble cavalry out of the way and then it gets flanked by the warbands 
I'm quite happy to have it in that position. As I said, if they try to attack with a massive attack against my warband, that might go badly for me. It might go badly for me. But it might also um, end well with my superior warbands tying down two elephant units. And that's 120 points tied down by 72, 75. That's a good trade-off. And uh, so what if I do my other plan, which is to move here? Well, in that case, the elephants could charge here. And if he's managed to engage a unit of my troops in melee here, the elephants could end up going into my cavalry. I don't want that situation to develop. So I think what I will do is I'll turn my cavalry to face this square here. Move these cavalry off, give this unit the general, and move my cavalry to here. And I know that these nomad light horse archers will probably try and tie down these units in melee, so I, I only need one more turn, and some of my other units will be in position. Uh, we haven't decided what to do with them yet, leave them there. So I guess... I will move my armoured noble cavalry around towards the flanks as well. So while all of this is going on, uh, in on, actually no, move them to here because that way they can also act as a reserve. They are distracting the nomad light horse archers and it just gives me a bit more. No, I have to move them to here because otherwise they could get end up uh, leading the elephants away from danger. So we move to here. And if necessary, they can dart back towards the center, assuming they're not too distracted by the Nomad Light Horse Archers. But this unit's probably going to get tied up, so it doesn't matter too much where I end up moving it. It's committed anyway. The Nomad Light Horse Archers could end up charging into the warbands, and they could disrupt them. These guys are going to cause me some trouble, whatever I do, and there's nothing I can do about it. So I just have to try and tie them up as best I can and move on. There is some worry that concentrated fire could disrupt the superior warband unit. We'll have to see how that goes. These Indian archers will be nervous because of the proximity, so they're unlikely to be able to do too much against us. And of course, I could lose the superior warband to a charge from either elephant unit. Start to move this unit up in support. Now, the problem is, is that I'm facing an awful lot of units here. With little support, the, uh, I think at the very least I need to move my armored noble cavalry to tie up the elephants. Because while I'm not too worried about these Indian archers moving out to flank, I am worried about this elephant unit moving to flank my uh, tied down warbands. So I have to send them over towards this flank now. Um, we're getting into position to assault at this point. And it really is last orders before this goes through. We'll resolve the me melees with our with the enemy archers now. We are eventually going to lose this. Unless something miraculous happens. So what I could do is move the infantry up here, move the cavalry onto the square here. They are now then facing the cat, the um, elephants and chariots. Now, hopefully, if I give the noble cavalry the general, they should stand their ground against the chariots. And uh, if the chariots try to charge, they'll be disordered and they'll um, by the elephants, and they'll be at a disadvantage to us. Hope if they get fired upon, hopefully the general will allow the cavalry to stand their ground. Uh, no, wait, hold on a second. What was that? There'll be warbands here. So hopefully, the el sorry, if I give the warband this, uh, my general here, they'll be able to stand up to the elephants. And my other warband can then start to make an assault upon the forest. It's kind of tricky with the elephant hovering around. But then I can use the, the cavalry to protect against the elephants. Okay, so we again, engineer solution. We have all the pieces in place here. This unit moves to here and takes the general. And this unit goes here. Uh, that's the wrong place. Cavalry move to here. Cavalry also move to here to delay the elephant. Now I need to think about because the elephants could decide to go down here and attack my warbands then. Now, uh, 
but I think we've spent enough time dancing around. It's time to form up for an assault. Trying to think about my angle carefully though. Uh, let's think of it. It's because uh, if the elephant does move here, it will exert a zone of control here, which could block the infantry. And if it decides to move here, it will block my angle of advance here, slowing my attack. And not by much, really. I can still get to these guys. I think I will move here. Uh, or even better, I'll hang back just for now. I'll move my javelin up, and if the elephants do decide to come towards us, and they're just out of charge range, they'll have to absorb at least one turn of javelin fire before they can even chase away my noble cavalry. So I think this is starting to work, and my careful maneuvering has paid off. But we'll see what Gribble does next time. Any disruptions in this area could be disastrous. So, but as long as everyone does their job today, we'll be fine next turn. Well, that was certainly one target. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off. That was a good choice, because if they disrupted, that would have been, as I said, a disaster for my line. Interesting. Oh, of course, trying to get the disruption on the unit that the artillery hit. Okay, and using the elephants as a delaying factor. Okay, I can, and of course, if we advance to engage the elephant, we will end up get, presenting our flanks. Good thinking, Gribble. Again! He's having amazing luck with his chariots. Uh oh. Well, that's not very good, is it? So, of course, there were even more massed archers, and if I'd been paying attention to the battlefield, I would have known that. That's okay, I can attack them next turn. <coughs> But it does limit my offensive options to this forest. <coughs> wow, and uh, with the two unit disadvantage, we're actually at quite a steep um, disadvantage. Oh, of course, because we're moderately disordered. Right, that gives me a problem to solve. Because if I engage here, that's going to mess up my battle line. I think I have Gribble's flank. If these, as long as we can engage these, ch uh, um, okay. I think just while I have the zone of control down, I will move my cavalry around to the sides, because this could get very ugly. And I'm not going to lock in my cavalry, I'll be braver than that. We managed to pass it, which is good. That means we're now in a position, pretty much a guaranteed position, to take these Indian heavy chariots out. Unle well, unless, of course, we lose melee, and uh, we're in this difficult quad triangle of units right now. And with my cavalry disrupted like this, the ideal solution would be to move my superior warband up to cover this area until we've got victory. But with my superior warbands fighting the archers under so much pressure, and now we've got this to worry about because he's generaled up here. To be honest, without the with these archers blocked off, oh, there's enough for him. He can get a disruption here. I have to charge, and that's a disruption. 
Okay. Now I am in a difficult position. Blast. And now that that unit's disrupted, I can't charge in to help this Indian archer unit. Because the elephants are there and they will devastate my troops. Oh, this is a horrible situation I'm in now. It's all gone wrong. And I can't move my general across there because I needed them. It's the worst possible sequence of events that's happened here. Okay, I'm going to have to throw this unit into the fight to try and shore up my position here. Move up. This is hideous. Move up here with the hope of very slowly moving this warband into action, but I'm setting up a flank attack there. I'm trying to block protect my cavalry from rear charges. Try and break through the archers. Okay, oh, amazing. Okay, that's something. Because I need to keep this square protected them. With the archers facing the way they can, they are. I can't charge through here and it'd be folly anyway, because they'd be pushed back and they'd get flanked from both sides. In fact, they'd probably just flank with the archers and uh, Gribble would charge his elephants into me here as well. So really quite a serious turn of events there. Okay. And we'll block the elephants from going any farther. We'll think of it, he can move up here and do something. And that could wrap up my infant my line, so what do I do instead? <clears throat> this is not this is not a nice situation because the archers can move up here and then the elephants could all go after my troops attacking the rough ground here And my, my, well, my warbands will win that fight over time. It's not a pleasant fight for them. But I don't really have any other option but to commit to it. That fight will go on for the rest of the day. <sighs> Move up to threaten the Indian close fighter, the uh, Indian archers. And um, chuck some javelins into the elephants there. Because we'll have to engage the elephants now. Let's take a look. Those Indian archers now represent a genuine threat to this war band. So they'll attack there. What might happen is the elephants might charge out and then get themselves into a fight with this warband. So that would be very helpful to us if that could happen. Kind of things are kind of just standing here taking fire from these archers, which isn't very good. These noble cavalry don't have to be ordered to be effective, so I'll pull them back a little bit. Because they're the, el the elephants that they were blocking... Are there anyway now? Are there anyway now? I can always bring them forward to block again. I think. Uh, I might have given no because of the presence of these light javelmen. I don't think he can get a flank attack in by 
because what you could do is charge and lock his troops in. They, but the thing is, they might fragment if they charge a warband. And if, they could, if they could last long enough, you could try and get a flank in with the elephant attack. But I don't think that's a very viable option. So it's safe. It was safe to pull them back. I had already thought about that a bit. I was just reconsidering it because you know I'm always second guessing. I thought self as expected that's starting to cr crumble. If these can rally up and these can hold out, we can win this. But it's uh, especially once we break this situation here. Uh, it's an ugly fight at this point. Definitely not going to be a clean victory. I think I have to turn back to try and block these nomad lights. I'm, my flanking is going to have to be done with this unit. Alternatively, I could just try, I could just accept, because if I don't turn back here, they'll block the flank attack, so I have to turn around and face the nomads and block the square. So there we are. It's a close assault so far, isn't it? Next turn. Um, wait a second. I was going to do something with this. Right, I need to figure out how I'm going to block these elephants. That's blocking that square there. Why was I reluctant to move to here? I think I don't know what I was hesitating about there. I think I'll be fine moving to here, and uh, that will let me keep these elephants locked down, keep them from any causing any more mischief to my war bands. Uh, he could move the elephants in here and try and eventually get around the flanks by moving up here to zone of control my superior war bands. But honestly, I would probably break the Indian archers before the flank attack could go through. Didn't leave anything back, did I? Did I? No. Okay. Next turn. Gribble says he's. Gribble seems to think he's screwed up here. Mm, okay. Well, that's not horrendous because that will block a flank attack. It means I can't. Uh, push down the line very effectively. Yep, that chases my cavalry just get chased up the way, so that's fine. See, you'd think of elephants as a counter to medium cavalry, but only if they're supported by other cavalry. And that might disrupt my javelins. Yep. So I've lost the light infantry battle, but that doesn't mean I've lost the battle. Hold firm, lads. Okay, good. Okay, good. That's the beginning of the end for the archers. Crunch. Okay, we stood our ground. Can we stand the ground again? Yes, we did. Okay, so all of his elephants are now engaged. And if I, my warbands can break through, they might spread panic. Surely, yeah, I was going to say, we can't stand firm everywhere. Okay. Well, amazingly, we can still cause. No, because we... it said zero to two because of the disrupt, they will have less firepower. Oh, but we're breaking the archers. That was even more effective than I'd hoped for. And they're fragmented. We're breaking through the archer line. Sometimes all you need is the courage to go forward. And that's a disruption. 
this archer line is breaking apart. Mm, but this is going badly. Right, no, let's focus on this. Resolve a fight in the forest. We are starting to grind the archers down, but once these elephants break through... I could let this break and hope that my cavalry get pursued instead of the... Uh, Elephants, because of course he's got his cavalry as well. If I engage with this horse now, then once my, hopefully if my cavalry don't break, then... Well, it depends, my warbands rally up all as well, and we can hold the line here. But if the warbands break and the elephants pursue through, Oh, well, it depends how far the elephants go, to be fair. Um, and if this unit breaks, suddenly we need to try to protect. But of course, that exposes this war bands now, because uh, he can potentially get the flank attack on me. Though I think that would still be very risky, considering that I might, I'll probably break these archers soon. We need to keep the elephants... T oh, can we? Uh-oh. Right, think about this. I need to prevent those elephants from getting the charge on my cavalry. I think we can do it, but only if we position ourselves very carefully. So you see, they'll turn back in this direction, which means I need to be able to block that square, which means I need to be facing this way because I need to be able to turn to face them out of command. Right, let's take a look at this. Our warbands are not particularly well matched. It's because he's generaled up everywhere. But this is the real opportunity. Can we break these archers? Good. And I think we might have panicked the elephants. Nope. But with a 2 to 1 disadvantage, we can certainly start to hurt them. Okay. Unfortunately, we couldn't disrupt the elephants this turn. But we're certainly starting to grind them down. What about here, where our warbands do have an advantage? No joy. And now we've got the worst fights to take. Well, the warband's held here, but it's a matter of time before I blow this 31% chance. We survived for this turn, despite losing the melee. We were, that's the value of having a general in close combat. Take this flank attack, because I'm much more worried about the chariots than I am about the... Uh, archers right now. Uh, a lot depends on whether or not my unit can survive this melee. <laughs> Lots of breath drawn through the teeth. Right, time to get some payback hopefully. I was hoping they'd run off in that direction. No such luck. At least we're protecting your cavalry though. So that's appropriate. Two disrupted cavalry units holding down two units of Nomad Light Horse Archers. Well, it's 44 points against 40, so it's not a bad exchange. This assault is actually going well. Uh, I seem to be regaining my knack for heavy, for heavy infantry assaults. Next turn. Hmm. That was lucky. Those chariots could easily have won that engagement. Trying to catch my uh, cavalry. Of course, I could fall back, but they could fragment. So I need to decide whether or not to take that risk. Now, that's just really unlucky. Gribble should have won that melee by all rights. So that elephants into the warbands held again. Warbands are kind of becoming my discount uh, obstacle to elephants at this point. If they can stand up to the initial charge, they actually do quite well. Battle line remaining stable so far. And there goes the Indian chariots. But of course, we're still fighting with the second unit of chariots. We're not through the flank yet. Oh. 
of course, if we can't break through, we are going to get flanked. Uh -huh. We're starting to break the elephants, though. And that's a fragmentation. Will we break the archers? That's critical, because that allows us through. Um, we would have been controlled by the zone of control from the Indian close fighters otherwise. So that's us break, breaking through in two places. Those are very timely rallies. A wave of rallies. Another rally. Mm. And of course, if I charge in, uh, hopefully my cavalry have the common sense to evade out into the open. Well, let's see. We'll take this break first. Unfortunately, we'll pursue for a turn. Didn't spread any panic. And the Indians hold out again. Wow. They pass a 15% chance to hold. Try and pull back. Uh, I think those chariots are going to get behind my line eventually. Whatever I do here, I think. Oh, I see the problem. They're going to get into my. Uh... No, no, those are the these warbands are in good order, so they won't have a problem. Let's see. Well, we'll throw our javelins and then we'll die because there's nothing I can really do to protect these light javelinmen anyway. No need to engage there. We've got no reason to take that engagement. Right. With a bit of luck, we might be able to break this elephant unit. That's a fragmentation. And can we actually beat them now? Nope. One more turn. There's one more turn in the elephant's lot to break anyway. I think. Go in for the flank attack and let's bury this unit of chariots under uh, several tons of Galatian steel. And they're starting to fail. One more turn and we should be through this unit of chariots. Maybe two more if uh, the chariots hold up particularly well. See if we can catch them. Nope. Oh, that could have been a mistake. Because now they, the Nomad Horse Arts can charge the Armoured Noble Cavalry and potentially let his elephants out into the wild. Let's see. Well, we're running all the way along the line here now. So let's see if we can make use of that. I only have nine turns left to translate this into victory, remember. It could also hit me in the flank. Very foolish of me to make that charge. I didn't did it without thinking. Let's see if we can't translate this weak point into an actual victory. Hoping one of these units would crack. Next turn. So here, seeing if I uh, pay for letting those light cavalry out to play. Nah, he just chased them off. Uh, Gribble missed an opportunity to attack my cavalry and get the elephants out of trouble. Okay, so uh, that's me pretty much got an advantage along the line now. So this should just be a matter of time unless he can get something out to flank my engaged units. But he is getting out. My, uh, my warbands are in trouble now. I'll need to fish these noble cavalry out of the forest again. Because I need to block those chariots. Yikes, didn't even realize they were loose. But 
that splintered his archers. I've got eight turns left to go. And those archers... Uh, oh, he was turning them around to flank. Very dangerous. <clears throat> Still can't dispose of the Indian chariots. We need to back up out of this situation, even if it means a risking a disruption. The warbands continue to fight. I think we are slowly causing casualties to the elephants, even if it's not shown in casualties. And we will grind down those archers, but only if we can protect our flanks. Because I don't know if we can protect our flanks. I've got this warband around that. I will. Oh, but he's, he's turned around to block it. Um, what I can do is take the artillery. And then make, that will maybe force these Indian archers out to fight because I can then go into the back ranks of his army. And these cavalry need to go off here, in this direction here. I think Gribble's realized this mistake. He'll probably pin my armored noble cavalry in place with the nomad light horse archers. And then the elephants will. Uh, either charge the engaged cavalry or they'll turn around to deal with this situation here. So I'm on a time limit. That's an auto break for the elephants. Now that might spread chaos through his line. Oh, I was lucky they didn't turn towards the elephants there. <clears throat> okay, and that's another cohesion test that the... Uh, the line has to hold. They have all, they've all held firm. The Indians are fighting very bravely here. Hmm. As I think they'll just break off and move backwards. Nope, we've got them pinned in combat because of my uh, noble cavalry threatening the flanks of the nomad light horse archers. So we've caught them. I mean, a bad day for the generals overall, hasn't it? Slowly grinding down the chariots. Ugh, but we didn't win that round of melee because of that freak disruption. That's an elephant dead. Oh no! Oh goodness, this has been a terrible day for the generals dying. And that's his whole my life. That could break all of this apart. See, something was bound to go wrong eventually. I was lucky I got away with as much as I did. And with my... Oh, this is now suddenly very dangerous. It was all going so smoothly and that one event has... Uh, that unit's probably going to break next turn. They're very likely to double drop in a situation like this. And uh, if they do, then that could splinter my entire line here. And then the elephants could break through and also they'll chase them by noble cavalry, meaning that this Indian archer unit has, has parole. And of course the elephants could start coming back to kill us as well. So I'm in real trouble here next turn. I suspect I'm about to have a very bad turn based on uh, chat. Well, that's already bad news. Of course. It's a matter of time before those uh, cavalry get caught. Okay. Right. Okay, so the worst hasn't happened. I really needed that warband to hold on for at least a turn. Cavalry are dropping like flies. Well, that won't do much to me. Gonna get flanked, whatever I do. Well, we 
we are breaking the Indian army apart. This is a disaster. I should never have let this happen. Well, I did manage to get rid of these Indian archers, and that might, and that lets me into the Indian close fighters, or it would have if we hadn't uh, wasted our time going after the artillery. Um, if I just realized at this angle, if I charge, then we're going to get flanked, which means I have to place another turn moving around the map battlefield. There's nothing I can do about this now. My entire line's probably going to explode. If we don't drop immediately, then I might be able to save some of my line. But I've managed to go from winning to losing here just by moving. The this was so stupid. What was I planning to do? I knew that the archers would stop me here. And, uh... Hmm. I don't think the archers can... Right. I don't think the archers can actually stop me from flanking here. Let's get our combats resolved first. Right. And that elephant's fragmenting. This unit logically will want to engage here. Uh, can start to move this unit toward. Well, wait, let's think about this. Probably best to send the cavalry off to threaten those archers. Ah, but they're behind enclosures. Okay, I need to think a bit more carefully about that. It's this unit that has to go and take care of the archers, and this unit needs to start to threaten the flanks of the uh, Indian archer line. Because those enclosures will very effectively stop a cavalry charge. Uh, this is going to go badly for us. And there's a small chance all of this could collapse. We've actually stood our ground. Good work by the superior warbands, that's why they're superior. I think I will pass the general over to here. At least he's encouraging um, his troops here. And we'll get the route and the elephant more quickly. I think I have won this, but it's... Ugh. And, but then again, we've got this situation here. So I'm probably going to get my uh, left, flanks, left, left, flank, left flank sliced off. I think at this point my cavalry can ride clear of the situation because those elephants are not going to get back in time to resolve this. Next turn. I think this might be it. I'm not expecting good game yet. Amazingly, our... Uh, Warbands held farm. But no, unless some kind of terrible catastrophe happens this turn. Ouch. Okay, we can move in and block now. And we managed to hold on against the elephants. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Yeah, there really is a limit to how long those noble cavalry are going to cling on against three archer capable units. Right, there goes one unit of elephants. They all hold farm, though, so that this Indian line is falling rather slowly, considering what how quickly they could go, potentially. Continuing to grind down the archer unit. But time is against us now on that flank. Well, we've managed to fragment the artillery. Now... I need to move like this to pin the chariots in place. <coughs> Bring down the artillery. All right. Uh, let's not resolve that just yet. We'll resolve everything else along the line. We are starting to get the upper hand clearly against the bowmen now. I'll resolve this fight next. 
Okay, the Indian cavalry are going down. What about this elephant fight? Because this could prove decisive. Well, my warband is steadily getting ground down, and now the fight we're actually worried about. Well done, lads. It looks like that's another elephant down, because I don't think it always displays the casualties. We'll surround these Indian close fighters and then move in for the kill. And we get a lucky break in impact. So that's the very lucky break in impact. So hard lines for Gribble there. Hit these archers here. It wasn't enough to break them. Very heroic stand by those uh, Indian archers. Uh, but here we go. This is what's going to bring the house down. Now do I want to attack this unit? Do I want to attack to try and save this unit? Or do I want to guarantee bringing down this unit? That's a tough call to make actually. Well, even, let's see. Okay, I think I will go for the charge here. And I think that's a fragmentation. Good. And now if we charge in, I couldn't quite bring the elephants down. Okay, but that should hopefully rescue my fragmented superior warband. Goodness, we've taken casualties. There's only 380 men left. There were 700 to begin with. And, oh. Okay. Well, we'll go after these guys here. And, yep, that's a flank opened up on the Indian archer. So we won't miss a chance to take that. Okay. Right. So the Indian position is collapsing now, but it's not over yet. Next turn. Wow. Oh, I thought it would end for sure that turn. Okay. Well... Where shall we end it? Crunch. Wow, they actually what they didn't uh, they survived impact. If we go for the archers, yeah, this right. Moving down the line. Now probably carry the Indian archers off with it. Nope, they held far. And I think that's going to hurt our superior warbands. Yep. Okay, but that's still two on one. And we will resolve this next. Nope. Ah, uh, we're moderately disordered by our own elephants. So that's why the uh, elephants, are, the uh, Indian archers are still able to fight. Okay, there. And no need for the flank attack to go. Okay, maybe there is a need for the flank attack to go in. Move them into position to flank and charge. 
and there we go. We may as well get into melee here because the situation isn't going to get any better if we just stand around taking missile fire. And we'll start to wear down the uh, archers here. Still fighting the elephants. Still holding the elephants. Amazing that we stood our ground there. And there we go. Okay. Now that should be a good game. Next turn. And that ends, I think. Okay, so let's talk about that. So early on I set up ready to immediately assault this rough ground, but when I looked at the odds over here with all the elephants and chariot support and the skirmishers and the presence of the Indians on rough ground with elephants lurking behind, well no, because he kind of spread it, well, he kind of spread his forces over this area as well, didn't he? Um, it started to look like this area was too strong to assault, so I thought I'd weight my flank against this flank. But what happened then was Gribal wisely withdrew his forces back towards this side of the battlefield. And that just left me in a situation where I was going to be chasing him all over the field, and there wouldn't have been a battle unless I bit the bullets and was prepared to assault this rough ground in this area here. Uh, so really this is just a case of me having to bite the bullet and get on with it and I managed to in the end I decided not to use my superior warbands here I decided to just use ordinary warbands because I managed to work out that the Indian archers would be quite vulnerable to a direct warband charge in rough ground that ended up paying off handsomely we completely shattered the archers here uh, and I also, it was also a good call to use my superior warbands here because the warbands wouldn't have stood a chance against these elephants. Um, and Gribble made the correct decision by moving on. You know, I was particularly impressed when he hit a war, I think it was a warband here while it was moderately disordered on the rough ground. And that would, you know, that should have been devastating. I'm amazed I survived that. And there was a lot of luck here. Any of these warbands could have broken under an elephant charge and really statistically one of them should have I just got lucky that all of my superior warbands managed to hold it together on the day and it's a reminder that while they don't have a good cohesion test well they have an average cohesion test and the superior warbands still have a good chance of standing their ground even against something as terrifying as an elephant charge so the, while warbands are quite vulnerable to elephants and shock charges Superior warbands, not so much. You can use them as decent line infantry, even in situations where they're up against uh, forces which aren't, um, which they don't in, either initially or in the long term have an advantage over. And it kind of gives me flashbacks to my fight against uh, dandy front lines, Romans and Armenians. And it's a reminder that if you're up against any tough enemy unit, particularly anything that fights in prolonged combat, Bring the superior warbands. Don't bring the warbands. Use them in supporting operations like attacking the rough ground or trying to get around the flanks to get into the, into the weaker enemy, enemy infantry hiding behind. Use the superior warbands as your line infantry. Now, I almost um, made a fatal mistake here and uh, Gribble managed to get his chariots into my flank here, which was good. He, if this unit had given up the ghost immediately, um, or I think it was a unit here, sorry, that actually did eventually give up because it was fragmented. But had this unit been barreled into by the chariots, this could have swept my entire line because it would have broken this unit, chariot would have swept here, broken this unit, which would also suffer from being severely disordered. And if that unit had broken, it could have swept all the way along my line and knocked my army down like nine pins. So I had a very lucky escape there. And uh, yeah, overall, I think my strategy worked. But I think I also had quite a bit of luck on my side. And 
Assaults like this are always tricky and there's always a little bit of luck concern because you have to be aggressive and you have to throw, you be willing to throw your army into situations which feel unfavorable. But, and you have to trust in the sheer strength and tenacity of these warbands to pull you through because that's really, ha that's really the Galatians game to attack positions that you wouldn't expect a heavy army to be able to tackle because no one's going to be crazy enough no experienced player is going to be crazy enough to meet you out in the open they are going to bunker up like this and that frankly is almost the correct decision to make when fighting the galatians unless you have a very clear strategy or powerful units of your own like the ones in the roman and armenian lists Anyway, folks, I have been Napoleon Complex. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the content, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell. And here's the results screen. That's it.